All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between linear and progressive springs and what you need to know about these different types of springs when buying a suspension kit or more specifically a coilover kit for your car and the pros and cons of both of them. So there are two different types of springs that you're going to come across when you're looking at suspension kits. The first is the linear spring and the second is the progressive spring. So the biggest telltale sign about what type of spring you're looking at is the way that they're actually wound. So on the linear springs, you'll notice with most coilover kits, if you have a look at them, like basically any BC racing kit, uh, Olin's, Fortune Auto, things like that, they feature a spring that it's regularly, like there's no difference in the gaps. It's all consistent all throughout and it's the same consistency and width all the way up and down. That's the biggest dead giveaway that it's a linear spring. There's no difference in the gaps between the coils or anything like that. Obviously not including the, the top and bottom on which sometimes flattens off so that it can actually mount properly, but otherwise it's consistent. A progressive spring on the other hand, similar to this drawing I've done, has different gaps between the springs and sometimes different widths as well on where it's wound. Now, sometimes that's to do with fitment, but basically when you see a spring that looks inconsistent, sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it starts off and goes like that and just gets wider. That's a common one for a lot of factory cars. That is a dead giveaway that you're looking at a progressive spring. So these two springs actually operate very differently and result in a different ride and different handling for your car. So that's why it's important to know what one you're looking at, depending on what you're actually going for with the coilover kit. So, or with your suspension kit and what you want to get out of it. So the first one I'm gonna go into is the linear springs. Now, the linear springs are more common for track and motorsport use, typically speaking, but they are also used for many road kits. Now, the reason why they are used for track and motorsport is because they're very predictable. So that's the biggest thing with these is that because they are linear and there's no difference in consistency, they will always react the same. So they're very predictable when they hit a bump you're not going to have a section where it's soft and then suddenly goes harder as you do with the progressives and i'm going to go into that in a bit but with these it's just the rate of the spring is compressing is the same all the way through the range and so therefore there's no changes in, in stiffness and things like that it's all predictable and that's why it's good for motorsport because you know what's going to happen on the track and things like that so it because of that, it makes for better handling, typically speaking, because of the predictability. And it's, like I said, it's used for track and performance. And the other thing with the linear springs is they are pretty much universal and can be replaced. So you can buy springs as long as you get the right diameter and the right height to match your setup. You can get different spring rates in linear springs and just swap them out. Now, you need to be aware of whether your dampers can handle the new spring rates and there's a bit of a discussion there but just strictly talking about springs they if you're talking about linear replacement springs you can buy a replacement spring that's the same height and the same diameter and it'll fit on your coilover or whatever suspension that you're running that's using these springs and you can just replace them for different spring rates and so that's the benefit of linear springs so for example if you're changing to swift springs or you want to go to a stiffer spring rate you can just swap them out and there's no complications, no issues there other than making sure your dampers can handle it. Now, moving on to the progressive, these are basically for comfort. So the biggest reason they're made is because of street comfort. So they're usually used for street. So I'm just gonna put street use because these two go hand in hand. Now, the reason why is because due to the gaps and the different, let's say, rates at which the spring is wound and the different sections of the spring, what typically happens is you will have a section that is softer to begin with. And then as it continues compressing, it gets harder. That's why with that drawing I did earlier where I went like this, what happens is they, the coils start off closer together and then they get bigger like that. And so what happens here is as this part starts progressing, it's softer, 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 but starts stiffening up. And if you hit a bigger bump and it compresses like all the way up to here, it's now much stiffer. And so that's why it's called progressive because it, as it compresses, it gets progressively stiffer. A lot of factory springs look exactly like this and that's why they use them because they're much more comfortable than let's say this, if you just compare them directly because on softer bumps, they're gonna be softer as well. That's the main benefit of them. However, because of this, 
they're actually more unpredictable. So I'm just gonna put unpredictable. For performance, now I don't mean unpredictable as in you'll lose control of your car, but it just typically makes the whole thing a bit softer and is not, you don't get as much response. So I'm just gonna put less response as you would with a linear spring, simply because of this that I've just described here that's going on. So that's why you won't find these on basically any race cars. And I don't, can't think of a sim single example that uses a progressive spring on a track kit simply because of this thing. They're purely a road comfort aspect type of part. That's what they're designed for. Now, the other thing as well is there's two points here. One is that you can't really calculate the spring rate. I'm just gonna write spring rate here. But basically, you can't really calculate a consistent spring rate because it changes as you compress. So it, it almost makes it, I'm not gonna say impossible because I'm sure you could calculate it, but it makes it extremely difficult to calculate what the spring rate of the spring is because it changes as the spring compresses. That's how it works. So it's very difficult to find replacement parts for these. Now, the other problem with them is that they're not usually a universal size like these are. And so you can't really just pull out a progressive spring and put in a linear spring in a lot of cases. In some cases you can. So there are instances where there's coilover kits that come with a spring that matches it'll like sit on the top mount on the top and it will sit on the coilover let's say you got the adjuster here like this and that's like the bottom of the coilover you got the adjustment there what will happen is you get a spring that actually matches that diameter and then it gets wider as it comes up like that and then it has like it mates to the top mount the factory top mount and that's why they're made you can get those and theoretically speaking if you've got a universal coilover top hat to sit on the spring like that, you could theoretically replace it with a linear spring if you really wanted to. But now you have the issue of whether the dampers can handle that spring rate, et cetera. But the point you have to keep in mind is that it's gonna be much more complex to interchange them and you might not even be able to at all. So that's the, that's the downside of spring rate. So basically what's gonna happen is when you're selecting coilovers, you're not really gonna have a choice. Like when you go to buy a coilover kit, they're not gonna ask you, do you want progressive or linear spring rates? Because the dampers have to be matched, et cetera. You're gonna have the choice between coilovers that have progressive springs and coilovers that have linear. That most on the market have linear springs at this point especially kits that are made for more performance. So anything, like I said before, anything Fortune Auto, BC Racing, Reaction, Silvers, I believe the Olin's Road and Track is linear as well. Tains, most Tains are linear on the Flex Z. Some of the street kits are progressive though, I believe. Things like that, Megan Racing, Godspeed as well. Those are linears as far as I'm aware. So most are gonna be linear, but some are going to be progressive and they are basically all the street kits. So I believe some IBAC kits for the street use progressive. I think a lot of Bilsteins use them, if I'm not mistaken. They have a lot of progressive street kits, not talking about their track kits. I think KW have progressives as well. So you just need to be aware of what ones you're looking at and what your priorities with the coilover kit are so that you get the right spring rate. Because if you want performance, you should go with linear. So basically I'm just gonna write performance here for those that's the big positive and then comfort for here that's really the big difference between the two so that's it in terms of the different types of spring the different types of springs that you're going to get for coilovers and suspension in general most lowering springs and factory springs are progressive just keep that in mind as well so if you're buying lowering springs even if it's not a coilover kit they're probably going to be progressive so that's basically it. It's performance versus comfort. You need to decide which ones you want and what your priorities are, and then you can make the selection from there. If you have any questions about any of this, put them in the comments below and I will answer them. Otherwise, if you're looking to buy a coilover kit, head over to nefariousracing.com. We've got a big range of coilovers for practically every car, so go check them out. And if you need help selecting the right kit for your car, just shoot us an email through the website and we'll help you select the right kit based on your needs and your budget, etc. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll catch you on the next one.